Hey everyone, Karnak here, Star Wars Armada Explained. We're going to look at the objective targeting beacons today. Thanks for joining me, by the way. Appreciate you guys watching the video. So targeting beacons is extremely straightforward. It's also not a very great objective, and as we get into it, you'll kind of see why. Uh, so targeting beacons, it says, set up after placing obstacles, the players alternate placing a total of four objective tokens in the setup area, starting with the second player. Special rule, while one of the second player's ships is attacking a ship that is at distance one to two of an objective token, the attacker may re-roll up to two attack die in the attack pool. There is a clarification to this card. It states, this card's special rule cannot resolve more than once during each attack, even if there is more than one objective token at distance 1 to 2 of the defender. Uh, essentially, people thought that if you have like 3, 4 tokens, you know, all next to a ship, you could get a re-roll essentially from, from each token. But remember, unless a card states otherwise, you can only ever resolve something's effect once. So even, you know, that, that should have been pretty clear but again people kept saying oh you can do that you know can you do this and so they made a clarification on no you can only just like anything else you can only resolve this card's effect once okay so how does this work so this is after you place obstacles is when you put down the objective token so let's start with that so we'll go ahead and get the setup area here uh let's go ahead and throw down those obstacles and remember they all need to be you know, uh, beyond distance three and beyond distance one from other obstacles. So beyond distance three of a player's edge, which is that line there, that line there, and uh, beyond distance one from each other, which they all are. Perfect. All right, what's the next step? Now we need to place four objective tokens in the setup area, starting with the second player. So the second player we're going to say is the Imperial player down here. Rebel is the first player, so you uh, you each get two tokens. First player gets two tokens, second player gets two tokens, second player goes first. You know what? Uh, I want to be try to be useful and try to see if I can get some shots on the enemy. Again, the range of this thing is only at distance one to two, which the black circle is distance one, the red circle is distance two. So anything at it, even if it's just barely touching it, and to give a better description of that, so at means just any part of the ship you're able to just barely touch. So even though this token is not, um, you know, touching the cardboard of the ship. The only time that you need to measure range when, is when you're attacking from cardboard to cardboard or ranging from a ship to a squadron, you know, from the ship cardboard to the closest point of the squadron. When you're measuring range or distances for card effects or upgrade effects such as what this is, you just need to be able to touch the ship, which is the plastic base, not the cardboard. Uh, you do not include the shield dials or the plastic framing for the shield dials when making this measurement. So something like that, that doesn't count. It needs to be just a smidge closer. So again, that you're just barely touching the ship plastic. All right. So as the second player, I'm going to place this token. Uh, let's see here. Let's go ahead and place this token right here. Because again, it's, uh, this is in the setup area. So as long as I can't put it in their deployment zone. So there we are. And then uh, the first player, and this is this is why this objective is not very good. Do you know what the first player can do? Again, he can put that token anywhere in the setup area, so you know what he's going to do with that token. Guess what? He's going to put it right in the corner. So I can't, can't get any benefit from it. If it's going in the corner, I can't do anything with it. So I'm like, well, you know what? Well, I want to, I want to place my token over here. Maybe... Maybe I can still get some use, and you know what? He can just take that token, and then he can stack it on top of that token. Yes, that's allowed. You can do that. There's no, there's nothing that says you can't put an objective token on top of another objective token. Again, there's nothing in the rule book saying that you can't just, as first player, just stick these tokens in a corner. Now, obviously, as second player, you probably want to try to plan around the fact that they're going to stick tokens in a corner. Uh, or even what they will sometimes do is they don't even put it in their corner. They'll stick it in your corner where obviously you are not shooting 
yourself <laughs> and the enemies typically aren't usually running you know again straight into them but it just all just depends uh essentially that just it kind of sucks that's why this objective is not so good because when they're stuck in the corner like that distance two is barely getting out past over here which is just it's not really effective you're not really getting a whole lot of benefit from this objective now if you do bring something like uh whoop. maybe if i there we go now you can get a little bit more benefit from this objective if you're bringing something like VCXs or Lambdas that have the strategic ability, which is if they move at distance one of token, they can move that token to be at distance one anywhere around the squadron that they want it to be. So that's a way you can get, you know, targeting beacon tokens to get on target. But again, that's it's definitely you have to bring strategic, and you, it's a bit of work make that work and again you're only really getting the benefit essentially from two tokens um to move on is to how the special rule works so we're going to say that this is the the setup you know the the player you know, each you know in the case of the first player it's like why would i set up anywhere near near those tokens i'm going to set up over here so a second player you could try to form a more defensive pattern with these tokens but again you're giving away your deployment area of where you're planning to be so first player why would he want to go there the only reason why he would want to go into that is if you deploy in such a manner that you force him to have to come chase after you like you're doing a running away maneuver you all you're going for is a six five complete non-engagement which that's not any fun it's it's allowed it's part of the rules but not not very fun for most people all right let's move on to the special rule how does this work in this example, I'm going to use an Arcadence, just because he throws uh, three red die on a broadside, one red die out the front. We're going to say it's the uh, the not command version, the light cruiser, the one that throws the black out the front and the back along with a red. All right. So while attacking a second player ship, or, or while a second player ship is attacking a ship that is at distance one to two an objective token, the attacker may reroll up to two attack die in his attack pool. So, situation like this, yep, we've got long range on that GR-75. Let's go ahead and throw our initial attack pool, which out the left-hand side with no upgrades is three, is, excuse me, three red die. Let's toss that out. And, uh, hey, you know, that's actually a pretty decent roll, except, ah, oh, we got a pesky blank. You know what? No accuracies. This thing's got to scatter. He's just going to scatter it. So we're going to keep the double. We're going to re-roll this blank and re-roll that crit. And, uh, you know, we didn't get anything to lock the scatter, but hey, we pretty much had something that, but you know, we didn't have before and that we could make an attempt to try to reroll to get some accuracies to stick some damage in. Um, so that is a, essentially, you know, reroll light. It's only two die. It only works for ships attacking ships. Um, it's only a benefit for second player to reroll. And again, it's while he does any attack. So if you do have the luxury of being able to double arc something, you know, at least you get a chance to, to have some rerolls. Uh, I think it would be great if these worked with squadrons for the second player. Um, but with so, so little benefit and so much effort and work that you have to put in to make this objective work, I can see why it's not taken, um, hardly at all but if it's one of those things too that if you have a fleet where like no red objective is beneficial for you take targeting beacons because you it's not giving you really any benefit and it's not giving your enemy any benefit as well i guess that's one way to look at it it's like i would just take close range intel scan in, in most situations like that um and again that the clark card clarification is that you cannot resolve that ability more than once with each attack so again it doesn't matter how many tokens uh, you have nearby you can only use it once so that's targeting beacons there's no other crazy interactions no other crazy things going on um nothing else i'm aware of in terms of rules or, or anything of that nature it's it's pretty straightforward if a ship is right at distance one to two you can reroll two attack die uh, bada bing bada boom as with anything, if you feel like I got anything wrong or something's an error, please be sure to point it out to me. Let me know. Make sure you check the video description and comments for potentially any minor things I may have missed or may have learned about um, that didn't require a reshoot of the video. 
I appreciate all you guys' support. I'm trying to get through the rest of the objective cards. Uh, there's only a few left. Uh, that way I'm you know, not objective out by the time we're building the rim drops, which I'm super excited for. And I will see you guys next time.